2011 super outbreak, also known as the April 25 through 28, 2011 tornado outbreak, was one of the largest, deadliest, and most destructive tornado events in U.S. history. Occurring over the southeastern United States, it produced 362 tornadoes over the four days, resulting in 324 deaths and causing billions of dollars of damage. It broke numerous records, including for the most tornadoes in a single outbreak and for the most tornado-related fatalities in the modern era. Here is a detailed analysis of the event. Covering its meteorological setup, the specific characteristics of the tornadoes, the impact on various regions, and the broader significance of the outbreak. The super outbreak of 2011 was caused by a combination of atmospheric conditions that were highly conductive for tornado formation. The key elements included a strong upper level jet stream. A powerful jet stream helped drive intense wind shear, which contributed to the development of rotating thunderstorms known as supercells the primary source of tornadoes. Warm, moist air from the Gulf of Mexico. During the outbreak, a strong flow of warm, humid air surged northward from the Gulf of Mexico, creating an unstable atmosphere. This allowed thunderstorms to grow rapidly and become highly organized. Cold front and low pressure system. A cold front and a low pressure system moved eastward across the United States, colliding with the warm, moist air. The resulting instability helped trigger severe thunderstorms and tornadoes. The outbreak started quietly on April 25th, but the early signs of the brewing catastrophe were present. A strong, slow-moving, low-pressure system developed across the southern and central U.S., creating conditions ripe for severe thunderstorms and tornadoes. Initial reports of tornadoes came in from Texas, Arkansas, and Missouri, with several EF2 and EF3 tornadoes touching down. While there were reports of structural damage and a few injuries, no fatalities were reported on the first day. On April 26, the storm system strengthened and the outbreak spread. Tornadoes were reported across a wider area, including Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. Several violent tornadoes were confirmed, causing significant destruction to homes, businesses, and infrastructure. Though fatalities started to rise, the deadliest part of the outbreak was yet to come. By the end of the day, the National Weather Service had issued multiple tornado warnings, recognizing the greater potential for severe weather in the coming days. April 27, 2011 is the single deadliest day in U.S. tornado history. On this day alone, there were 216 confirmed tornadoes, including multiple long-track violent tornadoes that were rated EF4 or EF5 on the enhanced Vegeta scale. These tornadoes ravaged towns and cities across Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, and Georgia. The most notable of the outbreak was an EF-5 that struck Tuscaloosa, Alabama, in Birmingham, causing catastrophic damage. This tornado, with winds exceeding 200 miles per hour, cut a wide swath of destruction across densely populated areas, killing 64 people and injuring over 1,500. Entire neighborhoods were flattened, and large sections of Tuscaloosa were left unrecognizable. Rescue efforts were hampered by the scale of destruction, with many people trapped in the rubble of collapsed buildings. Another EF-5 tornado struck the small town of Hackleburg, Alabama, and continued for more than 132 miles, making it one of the longest tracks tornadoes in U.S. history. It demolished the town, killing 18 people, and continued its path of destruction into Tennessee. During this day, tornadoes appeared in rapid succession, with multiple violent tornadoes touching down in simultaneously in different areas. Residents had little time to seek shelter, and in some cases, tornado warnings were issued only minutes before the tornadoes arrived. The tornadoes were also traveling at high speeds, increasing their lethality. By the end of April 27th, the death toll had soared to 316 people, making it the deadliest day of tornadoes in the U.S. since the 1925 Tri-State Tornado. Though the storm system began to weaken by April 28th, the threat was not entirely over. Tornadoes continued to form in the Carolinas and Virginia, but they were generally less intense than the previous day. The last confirmed tornado of the outbreak touched down in Virginia. In total, the four-day event produced 360 tornadoes, with the majority occurring on April 27. The 2011 super outbreak caused unprecedented damage across the affected regions. The outbreak resulted in 324 fatalities and over 3,000 injuries, making it the deadliest tornado outbreak in U.S. history since 1936. In Alabama alone, 238 people were killed, with other fatalities reported in Mississippi, Tennessee, Georgia, and Virginia. 
The economic impact of the event was immense. Damage estimates exceeded $10 billion, with entire communities needed to be rebuilt. Homes, schools, hospitals, and businesses were destroyed, and infrastructures such as power lines and highways were severely damaged. In some areas, recovery efforts took years, and for many families, the psychological toll was profound. The hardest-hit states, especially Alabama and Mississippi, received extensive federal disaster aid, and a massive response effort was launched involving the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, the American Red Cross, and other organizations. Volunteers from across the country arrived to assist with search and rescue operations debris removals, and other rebuilding efforts. Now let's look at the meteorological factors. The 2011 super outbreak was fueled by an unusually potent combination of atmosphere ingredients, a powerful jet stream, abundant moisture from the Gulf of Mexico, and a series of upper-level disturbances created the perfect conditions for severe weather. The storm system also moved slowly, allowing for the continuous development of supercell thunderstorms which are capable of producing long-lived tornadoes. In addition to the meteorological conditions, the topography of the southeast, with its valleys, hills, and forests, may have contributed to the enhanced damage. Tornadoes in these regions are often harder to see, and the varied terrain can influence the path and strength of the storms. Let's have a look at the lessons learned. The 2011 super outbreak left an indelible mark on the nation's collective memory. In the aftermath, there were widespread discussion about how to improve tornado preparedness and response. The National Weather Service revamped its warning systems, emphasizing the importance of clear, actionable alerts. Advances in weather radar and forecasting also helped in improving early detection in the years that followed. The tragedy also underscored the importance of community resilience and preparedness. In some cases, survivors credited their survival to having weather radios, storm shelters, or a plan in place for when warnings were issued. However, the sheer magnitude of the outbreak overwhelmed even the best prepared individuals and communities, highlighting the limits of human preparedness in the face of nature's most violent storms. Today, the 2011 super outbreak serves as a sobering reminder of the destructive power of tornadoes and the critical importance of early warning systems, community preparedness, and rapid response. For many, the scars, both emotional and physical, still linger. The efforts to rebuild and heal continue as the communities effectively remain vigilant and aware of the ever-present risk of severe weather.